Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to be making a very laid back random ARP, something kind of like this. Okay, so let's get into it. here. We're going to be kind of more so showing the process of a patch like this. So let's go ahead and close this one out for now. And let's go here to a fresh copy of pigments here. And let's go to a new preset. And for this, I went to the analog engine. And for the first one, I went with a sine wave. And then the second oscillator here, we're going to be going with a triangle wave. Kind of get a little bit of that soft tone there. And this can do a lot with randomization stuff, right? So First of all, what we can do here is kind of bring this volume down just a little bit like that. And then for our first random, let's drag and drop this on the volume. And let's change this one to sample and hold. And then the retrigger source is going to be the sequence clock because we're going to be doing stuff in the sequencer. So what we need to do, give us a little bit of value here and let's hop into the sequencer and kind of get this set up a little bit here. So we can tell by us triggering the sequence here, every single note is going to give us a different random value, which then changes the volume here. And maybe that might be a little too much to kind of back this down here because we don't want it going too crazy. And another thing we can do as well is put this on the voice pan, something kind of like this right here. Maybe spread this out a little bit more. So it's kind of just going over the stereo field and going through a volume as well. And we can even add a couple of voices to this as well. Okay, so something that first that kind of irritates me is the low end of the low mid. So let's go ahead and bring that out here. That stuff here. So let's bring that down. Okay, that should be fine for now. So what we need to do here in the sequencer is kind of do a lot of randomization stuff. So I know this track is going to be in F minor. So let's go ahead on the scale and let's go to a natural minor, something kind of like that. And then for the randomization stuff, let's first drag all of our 16 steps here and let's go full random for this every single time. And then for the auto regen, we can go to maybe one bar, something like this. So it's going to be generating a random value for each bar in the key of or in the key of F, whatever we play, but it's going to be in a minor scale. And then what we can do is well I'll go turn polyrhythms on here and for the octaves let's maybe bring this down to eight or something like that and then every other one let's go to plus one and then maybe here we can go to maybe the third one just go plus one like that and we're also going to get a little bit of randomness as well kind of bring this up here and you'll kind of see how it surrounds these lines here do the same thing as well for the trick probability we're going to go 100 percent so there's always a 100 percent chance that it's going to be random meaning that there's going to be some notes that hit and some notes that don't and then let's go ahead and slow down this rate from 1 over 16 to 1 over 8. and we can also add a little bit of gate length here just a little bit of random is something kind of like that so some notes ring out a little bit more and some a little bit less What we can do as well to kind of keep things a little bit in check here. So in our FX page, let's go here and add a compressor. And maybe set the ratio to maybe four to one, something like that. So we're going to keep it in check just a little bit there. So the next couple of things that we're going to be doing is going to be playing off with the delays, because if we play this here, it's going to sound kind of slow, right? kind of cool so let's go ahead and add some of those delays so for the first one let's go to a delay and the quarter note's going to be fine but let's change this one to dotted change the high frequency the low frequency a little bit of fine goes a long way and then ping pong right here and then full stereo width and then the next one is going to be as well another delay and this one we're going to change to an eighth note and kind of do the same thing here with our uh Frequencies and the fine and also go to ping pong and increase that stereo width quite substantially. And then what we can do as well is add a little bit of course tune to six. I do like the first mode and kind of just bring this down a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that I like to do as well. So for the cutoff here, let's go and change this to maybe a matrix. 
give a little bit of resonance. I'm going to bring this down something like this and get an envelope to modulate this, uh, this uh, cutoff here. So let's get quite a healthy range, something kind of like that. And what we could even do as well to get a little bit more of those upper frequencies, maybe let's add in a saw wave here. And depending on how ambient you want that, you know, kind of just bring this into taste. So this is going to be the cool part here. So on the amp mod, let's go ahead and turn the velocity all the way up here. And then for the sequencer on the velocity settings here, what we can do is go to full random right over here, something kind of like that, and maybe click and then hold shift and kind of bring this down just a little bit like that. Maybe so it's almost in the middle, but a little bit above here. And so this is going to give us random velocity every single time. And now here is the cool part. Once we're over here in our synth page again, we know that envelope two is going to be modulating this cutoff. So we can go to envelope two and then on the side chain, what we can do is select velocity and bring this all the way up to one. So it's generating random velocities, and depending on how hard the note is getting hit, the filter is going to open up a little bit more or a little bit less. So less velocity, less filter opening, more velocity, more filter opening. So we're kind of playing off a little bit more of that randomness. Okay, so moving on from here, anything in the sequencer that we also would like to change, we can. For the most part, this is kind of be going to kind of be where it's going to stay here. Now, once we go back here, we can adjust the filter envelope or the main envelope a little bit here. Let's give a little bit of attack, or a little bit slower attack, and a little bit of release as well. And maybe we can always switch on our filters. Maybe we can try the Jupiter. The Jupiter is actually kind of nice. Okay, so we're almost done with the effects here. So we have this stuff set up here. In our last one, we can probably use reverb for this, which I'm sure you saw that coming. So since this is kind of ambient, spatial kind of thing here, let's increase our size a little bit here. Maybe a little bit of the pre-delay we can also increase and then reduce the dampening because the dampening is kind of important, right? So dampening is, is basically dampening or kind of attenuating those higher frequencies in the reverb. But the cool part is, is with the velocity getting hit by the randomness from the envelope, right? So the harder the velocity, the more this filter is going to open up. And the more that filter opens up, we get more frequencies that gets fed into the reverb. So it kind of plays off each other in that sense, if that makes any sort of sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some of our macros here. So what we can do for our first macro, we can always do the cutoff, maybe bring this down, maybe something kind of like this at our cutoff here and give the macro the full influence here. So all the way at the top, it's going to be full. We can kind of slowly bring that down. Kind of depending on where we would like that. So let's label that cutoff here. And also resonance might be nice for this. So bring that down and bring this maybe halfway up like that and then label this as res. And depending on how spatial you want as well, we could always increase the delays here. So maybe we can go as high as maybe 35 on these to see how that kind of sounds, because the delay is a very important spot for this here. So 35 on both of these, let's see how that sounds. OK, 
Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do our thing here with the sub because sometimes that can be nice. So in the utility engine, turn this bad boy on, turn our output all the way down, change from filter to direct out. And then the third macro, let's drag and drop this here and give a healthy amount just in case and then label this macro three sub. So let's take a listen to that. going to sneak a little bit in here for the patch as we save it here. And then the last one here, as you guess it, is going to be the FX or the effects, depending on how you say it. So the compressor and the EQ are fine. So let's do this on the delay. So this was 35. So we have to bring this up to 0.35, something like that. And then for the other ones here, let's drag four here to 0.35 as well, because we have 35 on this one too. And then the chorus and the reverb. So let's drag and drop here and here. So the chorus is 20%. So let's bring this down to 0 0.20. And then the reverb is going to be at a healthy 46%, which is quite of a lot of reverb, but this is kind of how that, uh, or 48, whatever. Let's do 48. Let's see how that sounds. And label this FX because being organized is good. For this here, depending on what key you're playing, you really just have to play the root note and then it's gonna kind of just do the work for you. And then last thing before we let you go here, something that's also cool with this type of patch here. If we're in the sequencer, we have this as the natural minor scale and soon it's randomized thing, which we should know about by now. But if you want to use this as an ARP, we can just select here for the arpeggiator and all of our settings here are the same and we just have to play in key to whatever it is that we're doing. And then it's going to be an ARP. change the modes as well. We can go down or something like that. Or if we're playing up the randomness, we can just go random and just see how that goes. I kind of think the random is probably good to go with here. I'm going to leave that here on the ARP here, and then we're just going to select the sequencer. So if you want to go back to the ARP, it's already here saved as random. So this is basically that patch. Let's kind of listen to it again and see if we uh, want to change anything. Yeah, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. I just did a little bit of EQ here as well. This kind of band was kind of poking out a little bit and then just raising the top here because it's kind of nice having that uh, filter open up a little bit more on those heavy velocity notes and then sending that to the reverb because we backed down that dampening. So yeah, this was this path patch in a nutshell. If you want to add a little bit onto it, you totally can. It's cool to add a little bit of a sample here. So like this note here, which I did on the last one. Kind of makes it a little bit more melodic, I guess. But yeah, that's basically that patch. Hope you have a lot of fun with it. If you'd like to get a free copy, there is a link in the video description below, and it can be yours. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.